Hello everybody, today is Sunday the 3rd of September, I think, 2nd or 3rd, and I am going to make a card, I actually made it already, I can show you, and then I show you the process. Uh, I'm using new things from the Lawn Fawn release, the birdhouse and older the bats from last year, and also a foiling and stuff, and I was inspired by Jennifer Project Cupcake. I saw her thingy on Instagram. I also commented there. It's lovely. Um, just such a great idea. And I took that idea and figured out some things. Also, I needed the help of Jennifer McGuire to do that video. I will link both uh, in the description down below, just to, to say that that's what inspired and helped with the process. And then I tried to do my own thing. So, and this is what we're going to make. Okay. And here are the main supplies. This is Build a Bird House, Fantastic Friends, a Halli Hallo from Create a Smile, and Favorite Flannel. And later on, I also used the Betty for You stamp set. So here I start with ripping out the papers I need. First one didn't go so well. This is the background, the first one. The second one is the outside birdhouse, and the lighter turquoise is the inside. And then I cut out the back panel and then the bird houses. Uh, I need two for the inside, one for the outside. And then I added different roofs and things to it. Also this cool flappy door. I want to be able to see through the door. So I just did a window frame for the inner house. This is what I'm gluing on now. I cut that out with from glitter cardstock. I love that color. It's very, very pretty. And then I thought I would do some shading. So I take antique linen for the inside houses. I have to put them upside down because it's a bad house. It's going to be upside down. <laughs> and yeah, I do the roof and then that little thing, the porch or something for both of them. And then I take grounded espresso because you see that on this very dark brown paper. And I do all those on one side too. And then I start, oh no, I have another one. Ah, then I wanted to do the birdhouses too. I think this is uh, faded jeans. Just again, upside down. So I wanted the shadows to be on the roof, which is down under. <laughs> and then I took broken china. I always mess those up, broken china and chipped sapphire, but this is broken china. And I do the same for those bird houses. I cut that part out. And then I start, I think I start, finally start gluing the stuff on. Yeah, with liquid glue, nothing special about that. I had some problems with the flappy door because it's quite flimsy. Maybe, maybe next time I would reinforce the round the, the ring around and also there I had to pay attention that I had the shaded part down and not up so I wanted it all to be darker on the bottom parts then again the same for the inside houses and then ah yeah I want to stamp the sentiment on one of the inside houses so I had to put that circle back in and here I tried to line up the pattern of the paper had it wrong at the first time and then I took some washi to fix it on the outside, turn it around and just um, stick it down with tesa film, with um, scotch tape, cello tape. And then I could take off the washi on the outside and there we go. Now I can stamp the sentiment onto that thingy. And I wanted to see a certain part of the sentiment through the round hole. It says Liebe Grüße. I wanted to see the Liebe from the outside because it actually just fitted on that round thingy. So that's where I'm lining it up. Liebe Grüße. So when you send a letter at the end, you, you write um, greetings. And that is Liebe Grüße in German. Liebe means um, with love or, or, or lovely. Or, and Grüße is the greetings. So I stamp it a few times. I have a new stamping tool. Um, I'm so far I'm quite happy with it. 
I stamp it many times because I just want to use the normal ink, not the sticky ink. So I want it to be very wet. And then I use the Wow embossing powder. It's the transparent one, clear gloss. Um, and that just sticks on it. And before I stamped, I did use the anti-static um, powder tool. And here I had some problems with uh, nearly burning my fingers. I should have used the tweezers using my heat gun to set that embossing powder. Also, I didn't clean my stamping tool and I was a bit worried that I would melt the embossing powder onto the stamping tool, but that did not happen. And here I take my fantastic friends. I decided to use three different bats and I stamp them onto, I have those uh, note cards from Migro, just from the supermarket, they're fine enough. There, that impression wasn't that good, even though I use it in the end anyway. And the same happens to that one. Stamp it again, just in case. And then I decided maybe, maybe I wasn't sure what I wanted to use. So maybe I need those twigs, branches too. So I did stamp those too. They are from the new stamp set, Betty for you. And I, I use one of them in the end. And I use, uh, it's Lawn Fawn. Uh, jet black ink on the wrong um, ink pad because I didn't find the right re-inker for that ink pad but like this it's fine because that ink really goes for alcohol markers and and watercolor they were the colors I don't know if you could read it I couldn't but I don't want to go back so I used the very the lightest shade and the second lightest for the wings I tried to really not make it as dark as usual then there I used the second lightest color and the third one and a little bit of the darkest one for the tip of the ears. And like that, it got a bit lighter than the last time. It's BVs, it's not the gray ones. So it's those are good colors. I think Lawn Fawn, when they came up with the stamp set, they advised those colors for those pets. And then the ears too. And here I had colored over the teeth, so I take a gel pen, do all the teeth and also the eyes. It, those are the glossy, glossy gel pens. Glaze, what are they called? Sakura glaze or something, jelly roll. And they have a shimmer to it, that's very cool. There, I just grabbed three different browns for the branches, um, light, middle and dark, and they worked lovely together. But I don't take that much time in, in choosing colors or I don't get further. I hate doing that. So I just grab some and hope it works out. Then I line up all the die cuts. I'm always very happy when I have them. Because also when you have carpal tunnel and you have to cut them out by hand, that goes onto that thing too. So those die cuts are really helpful. Then I, cut, I run them through the die cut machine and have some troubles taking them out. But I succeed, I get them all out and put them in a pile and put them aside to use for later. Um, actually, I wanted to try something, so I took a black pencil, colored pencil, and just went over those lines because they weren't stamped so nicely. And I really, really like how that turns out. And it is on my, on my list of to-do things that I might want to do more with color pencil, like the finishing touch. There you see the left without it, right uh, with the colored pencil. But also with the darker purple one could have done something. I've seen Lo Shaker Alberto. I don't know what, he, what, what he's called. He's on Instagram and he does amazing colorings and he always uses colored pencils at the end for the finishing touches and maybe that could help me too. And there you just saw me use chipped sapphire on the edges of the background panel because I don't like it when it just fades out. I need um, a little surrounding somehow. There I am starting with the hot foil. Uh, that was a spontaneous decision. So I cut my foil to the right size and placed it on my hot foil plate which is from Lawn Fawn 2 with the clouds. Then I heated up my glimmer machine and um, yeah, pushed the timer, waited for it to be hot enough. And as you can see, the foil is bigger than the paper I put on it. 
That's why I will put another paper on top of that so my shims don't get foiled. And that was a good decision because it really foiled onto the paper. So it ran through the die cutting machine and is back here. And here comes the reveal. Reveal, another hard word for German speakers. Um, lovely clouds. And now this is a magnetic thingy, but it does not work with those background plates because they're too heavy. I think it, this is why I grab it like that. In older versions of this machine, you've got tweezers or something, and that would be better because it's fun, the magnet thick thing but it doesn't work here i have this solid plate and i like doing i still haven't perf um this process isn't good yet um i like to just use that stuff too with that solid plate put a paper on it and then also run it through my die cutting machine and here you have a look at the clouds which we just did before and there um, the over foliage well, that got onto my spare piece of paper and now I have big, big problems to get that thingy out of the machine. It would be great if, it, if the base had a handle on the left because I don't get it out. The struggle is real. It's really, really, really hard. And I, um, I think I cursed the machine at the end because I also don't want to suddenly have a little, uh, a huge pull that everything shifts on, on the shimmy thingy. So, but I got it done and here it's already back. I switched it off because I don't want to foil anymore. And here, take this stuff off. It is a bit hot, so, but I still peel it off. And then you see in the middle, it's not so well. So I need to figure that out with more pressure or something, but I can use it as a frame. And at least I used it for something. Otherwise one would just throw that out and I find that so wasteful. And here again, the struggle with my magnetic thingy, which is just not strong enough for that. It goes like that a bit and then just drop it onto my mat. <laughs> I should take my uh, oven mitts or something to do that in future. Okay, now here we start with the mechanism. Um, yeah, so I measure three centimeters. It's a bit more than an inch and I make two strips with that. I just... Make a mark there, and then I will cut that off with my thingy. And I use the leftover of that piece of paper that I cut my back panel out of. And I don't know, I, I tried to show it to you in inches, <laughs> how much that is in inches. A bit more than an inch, one and a quarter maybe. So I cut it off with this, is it Tim Holtz something? Is it tonic guillotine cutter? and just make those two strips and then they're quite flimsy so i will glue them together um going a bit ahead yeah i just tried to make it very 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 precise it's still not gonna be precise <laughs> so here i glue them together to make them a bit more sturdy and i just took that same background patterned paper so it will be a bit less um so it will be seamless, less obvious that there's um, something going on. And there you can see as this white is shining <laughs> around the thingy, it's not precise, but it, it'll do, it'll do. Um, and then I had huge problems with, with those parts because I didn't know how to do it. And, and then I didn't know how to film it and what to do at which point. So I'm slowing it down here, but... Then I figured out how much I want to be under the birdhouse of that strip. That's where I need a score line for the mechanism. And then I need another one at, I did half an inch also for the mechanism. And then I turn it around and cut all of that inch, one and a half inches. I made the score line there to cut it off because I needed that to attach one of the birdhouses so it can work that they are exactly on top of each other. Because normally you would have to have something bigger on the outside of the mechanism that reveals something that is just a little bit smaller. But this needed to be the same size. So here we have the mechanism piece. I score those both lines. And that will have the inner house on it, which will reveal, reveal the sentiment. 
And then I'm very carefully figuring out where to put the glue. Because I want to put it on the birdhouse because apparently that strip shows out behind the birdhouse. So I turn it over. I take a pencil and make some lines on the back where to put that glue. Here are the lines. And then I take some liquid glue, fill up the whole tip of that thingy and then glue that on the strip. And just when it's about to really settle and attach, I realize, oh, I stamped the image upside down, the sentiment. And then I thought, oh, no, I have to do it all again, stamp it all again. And I rip it off the thingy and then I realize, no, <laughs> I had the birdhouse the wrong way around. So I was very, very happy to not have to die cut it all out again and do all the heat embossing and stuff. So now I have it the right way and I do the same steps again. I measure where I want to put it. I put it right to the score line, to the first score line. Um, exactly. So that's that. And it does not matter how that back looks because that will be attached to the front panel at the upper part of that house. And now I had to figure out the next thing. It's kind of like a flippin' awesome. So the next panel goes onto that small thing. But I want the house to be on the other house. So I need a little panel to bridge it over to the, to the little strip part that I want to attach it. I find it hard to explain it. Also voiceovers are very, very hard. Uh, because it just goes and you have to talk about it and you don't find the words. So here I am using score tape on that small, it's half an inch um, wide strip thingy between the score lines. And I thought it's a bit low, so I tried to make a little height and just added another layer of score tape. I don't know if it made a difference or not. And then I can take that other part I cut off before and attach that to the score line so just to the next score line um, like that and then I can take my next birdhouse which will be on the outside and try to put it on right above the other one so that it doesn't show. Now I notice that when I open those doors I won't see the sentiment because I have that strip there. And now I line it up on the wrong part again. <laughs> Needs to be on top of the other house. And so I take my pencil again, make a line, and then I cut off that circle. I wanted enough of that strip to be in the house. I could have just cut off a straight line, but I want just wanted more to adhere to the thingy. And I have to cut it a few times because of that reason because I just wanted as much paper as possible. Well, then I take the house again and check if it works now. And I will have to go over it a few more times until I'm finally happy. And then I can put glue on that flap thingy. And I see how far that the house goes, the back house. So I can just line the glue up with that one and then put my bird house, my bat house actually, on it. And also be careful to not have the liquid glue go onto other panels and attach there or smudge it. So I'm lining it up here, but I think then I try to, as soon as possible, put the other one aside and then push it down from the other side. And that's also on there. See, there's still something <laughs> showing through the thingy. So I'm trying to take that off too. And now I can attach the other inner house. I just put glue all over the the one that is a bit the, the front house. And then I can put the thingy on there. Also try to make it like exact, which it's not, but as close as it can be. And there you see you can see through the whole hole, which is great. And it shows the Liebegrüße. It shows a part of it. So, <laughs> kind of the hardest part done. 
Uh, next thing is to figure out where to put the slit where you have to put that um, strip through. This is just, I guess, some, some cosmetic surgery, make it a bit nicer, but nothing happening there. Testing the doors. Okay. Kind of works. So I want it to be flush with the card base. So I measured um, with the measuring stick where about I want to have the slit. It needs to be a bit further. It needs to be behind the house. It needs to be a bit on the bottom half of the house and not further, not more left and right than the house itself is. So it doesn't show. I just eyeballed it somehow, made three centimeters because my strip is three centimeters wide and I guess a little bit more um, the, the, the slit. And I tried to measure the sides, but my brain doesn't work. So I, I just tried to make it somehow. Uh, th those are the points where I get a bit desperate because I cannot figure it out. So that's why I do it all just hunkling my pee. And this wrist times P, that is just doing it somehow. Um, and then I take my cutting board in and an exacto knife, a craft knife, and just make that slit a bit more than three centimeters. And then I just made it a little wide. So I make another slit next to it. I did not measure that. I just, I think it's about two centimeters. That will be about an eighth of an inch. And then I cut that whole slit mm. out. If you have a die, you can use a die for that. I thought I would have some kind of dies, but I thought the the less the better. So one can just do that without any special dies, die things. So it is behind the house, so that is a success. And then you have to pull that f strip through the slit. And then you have to attach the bottom part of that under house on the paper or it wouldn't work. That has to stay put there. The glue shouldn't get too high up because you should not go to the, to the slit, but just under it. So this is how I did that. I just held it all in place there and went from the underside to put some glue on it. And then I just pushed it down. And I guess as soon as possible, open up the other houses so that they don't attach there too. Okay, so that, that, that was the worst part. So the trickiest part of this card is finished. Okay, testing it out. It works. And yeah, that is just pushing it down and things. And to finish that mechanism, one needs a card base. So I take a card base, make a card base, just a bit bigger than my panel. That's more for decorative uses. It could be the same size at, as the panel. Now my strip is way too short because I just used that patterned paper because I wanted to use all of that. And now I'm taking the same as my, um, what's it called, a card base paper. I take another strip of three centimeter wide paper, which is the same as the as my pull tab and then I there I noticed it stuck to the thingy so <laughs> glued there already which was for me the sign not to take liquid glue so I took score tape and then it just attached that on the back there so that the glue that's also on it cannot adhere to the card base and then on the other side I just took scotch tape uh, cell tape and now I also wanted a little belt that holds the pull tab in place because I didn't want it to go left and right and get stuck to, um, to the score tape, which I will put on later. So I take a small strip, I fold it around it, not too tight, and then just cut it off so it, there's a little overlap. Take it off again, put some score tape in the middle part, <coughs> And then wrap it around, I'll take it off, take the release film off, wrap it around and then push it down and then glue, adhere, the, just try it out somehow <laughs> and then adhere those arms together so that that pull tab will just stay in place there. 
Okay, so now that is fixed. And then I am going to cut it off. Not yet, because I thought I don't know how long I want it. I want to figure that out once it is on the card base. Trying it out again. Very important part. And then I put score tape around the edges. I guess just not too close to the mechanism. So one on each side and on top I did two strips of um, score tape. And I take that all off and put it on the card base. So And, and once it's on the card base, I test it again. This just made me laugh so much because of... It's kind of funny. I don't know why. So, and then I cut off the pull tab. I wanted it to be a bit over the card base space. So one can grab it easily. And I want to make it nice and do some rounded corners. And also now the decoration. Yeah, I have three bats. I want to put on one out there. Which I will put on with some foam dots, just because I can, because it's on the outside. It can be a little, it can have a little more height. Because the ones on the inside, I don't want height for those. So I will glue the other ones on with liquid glue. And I just took, um, paid attention to not have the foam dots where they shouldn't be. <laughs> I think I'm getting tired from that voiceover. <laughs> um, there, yeah, one on top, just with liquid glue, and then those had those fitted there too. That's what I figured out before. I'm very proud that I figured out some stuff before I did that. I kind of had to, <laughs> or I could not do those videos like that. It's a very different approach at the moment. And normally I just do something, take it along, and now I try to figure it out before and do it. And still figuring out why to, while doing it. So this twig, which was supposed to go up there, doesn't work there. It's a branch. But I thought this one would look nice. So I just cut off the edge a little bit. So it looks like it comes out, comes in from the outside somehow. <laughs> it overlaps a little bit on the other side. But I don't mind that. I think it's quite pretty. And with that, I think I'm finished. Or what am I doing? Ah, oh, no. I still had to write something. I write Ziehen. Ziehen is pull in German. So it's a German card. I'm still missing some German sentiments. Um, so I have to write it by hand sometimes. And there I rounded those corners too. And then I start with the envelope. I try to always do the envelope at the end of the card making session. So, so it's finished, finished. And, and future me will thank me. <laughs> So I have another video with all those envelopes, but maybe by just watching it, you see how it works because I don't want to explain it. It's very hard to explain those things with front panel, back panel and stuff. There's something else I wanted to say. Oh yeah, this video, when I put all the clips together, it was one hour long and I worked for two and a half hours. So. One and a half hours is just thinking and trying to get organized and the doing it was about an hour. So this, this card was quite hard for me to do and I'm very happy it worked out. So here are the finishing touches on the envelope. Maybe it also motivates somebody to make their own envelope when you see that always at the end of the video. And I guess next video won't have that. <laughs> and the label so you can write it. And here it is all finished working. Ta-da! And now I thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.